Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anisia Antoine. This edition's top stories. Adherence to COVID-19 protocols detects a new case of COVID-19. The Ministry of Health's rigorous pre-testing policy is credited for protecting the island from COVID-19 as borders opened. And dengue fever poses an increasing threat during the rainy season. The adherence to COVID-19 protocols has assisted the Ministry of Health in detecting a new case of COVID-19, bringing the number of confirmed cases in St. Lucia to 26. Dr. Sharon Belma george is the island's chief medical officer. Results received on Tuesday, August 18, 2020, reveals that St. Lucia has recorded a new case of COVID-19. The case is a 32-year-old female who traveled from the United States and has been in government quarantine from arrival. She is stable and will be transferred to the respiratory hospital for care. This brings a total number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 to date to 26. A total of 4,768 tests have been conducted to date. As we manage new cases and investigate possible contacts, the public is advised to take personal responsibilities to protect themselves and the family. We advise against mass crowd gatherings, we advise on responsible behavior without unnecessary panic. The public is also advised that all of the protocols are still in place. These also include the use of face masks in public places and to maintain safe physical distance from others. We appeal to everyone to continue supporting our national effort to minimize the threat of COVID-19 on our island. The five respiratory clinics remain open to facilitate anyone with respiratory signs and symptoms or any concerns. Also, the 311 hotline is available where questions or concerns can also be addressed. We continue to advise on the importance of maintaining the standard recommendations for infection prevention and control. And these include regular hand washing with soap and water or the use of alcohol-based hand sanitizer where soap and water may not be available. And to cover your mouth and nose with disposable tissues when coughing and sneezing. The Ministry of Health and Wellness will continue providing further updates on COVID-19. Tourism Minister Honorable Dominique Fede has lauded the national fight against COVID-19 as St. Lucia is rated number one in the Caribbean for the national COVID-19 response. In a comparative data analysis of confirmed COVID-19 cases per 10,000 population, St. Lucia has a rating of 1.4. Minister Fede says government's position on testing played a pivotal role. More from Lisa Joseph. The government of St. Lucia has been firm on its position of pre-testing for anyone coming to the island amid the COVID-19 pandemic. When the island's borders reopened to international travel on June 4, 2020, travelers were asked to provide a negative COVID-19 test result 48 hours before arrival. There was widespread concern about the measure from the public and stakeholders, which subsequently led to a revision of 72 hours. With the island's own testing capacity beefed up, the reopening of the tourism sector on July 9, 2020, saw the protocol further revised to provision of a negative test within seven days of travel to St. Lucia. Tourism Minister Honorable Dominic Fede says the unwavering stance has served St. Lucia well in the COVID fight. We were hauled over the coals by many stakeholders, not just in St. Lucia, locally and internationally, for the rigid protesting mechanism that we have put in place to ensure that we can sustain the opening of our tourism sector. And today I would like to say that um, we have been vindicated uh, by ensuring that we stay the course and remain very uh, strict as it pertains to the pre-testing protocol. The setting up of the health facility at the Hiranora International Airport for the screening and processing of passengers, the minister says, has added tremendous value to the national effort against the pandemic. Since July 9, some 5,000 visitors have been welcomed to the island, a stark number to the hundreds of thousands who flocked before the deadly pandemic struck. That means that we're somewhere up to about just around 10% of our pre-COVID capacity. Nowhere near where we would like to be. Still a lot of catching up to go, 
But what we have to do is to continue to build that momentum. We're confident that as we continue this phase, and this phase continues to be successful, what will happen is we will see more hotels coming into the fold. Some 13 hotels have already opened their doors, providing employment for over 2,000 employees within the tourism sector. Our last count has shown there are some 500 taxi drivers who are operationalized. Minister Fede says despite the low load factors, airlines continue to show confidence in the island's future. Um, the airlines that would have come to St. Lucia ordinarily would have had a load factor of about 80, 85 percent uh, in some instances on key markets. Now we're seeing an average of about 30 percent. So you can tell that it's um, very, very uh, difficult and testing times for a number of stakeholders within the sectors. Um, the hospitality sector, again, continue to um, experience low occupancy levels. And those occupancy levels are uh, a, a cause for much concern when you think of the profitability of the various hotels on the island. And so what we've got to do is to do our best to keep working with them to try to create the best enabling environment to try as much as we can to incentivize our hotels to keep operating um, as we get through this rather difficult time. The tourism minister assured that government will maintain the health of all citizens as its main priority, even as it seeks to protect livelihoods. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Meantime, the national COVID-19 protocols guiding the reopening of the economy will be reviewed August ending. Health Minister Senator Mary Isaac says the assessment of the opening of borders is critical to the decision-making process. Well, you know, we said we are going to test this open borders for a 30-day, you know, period. And that comes to an end at the end of August. So then we are going to, we are already, you know, discussing and looking at how it is working out. So given the next, we have another two weeks in August, we are going to keep looking and seeing what is happening. We also look at other countries, what is happening in other countries in the region, and then we can take a decision based on what we have experienced for the past 30 days, what we, we experience, and then we can decide um, how we move forward. With several Caribbean islands rolling back measures in the face of increased cases of COVID-19, Senator Isaac says government will not hesitate to act similarly if such a situation presented itself in St. Lucia. The state of emergency which is in effect, the minister reminded, will easily facilitate that. So we are hoping we do not have to roll back, but I'm saying if we do have to, nobody wants to roll back, you know, but we, if we have to, we will, and we have already gone through the process once. Of course, we will do it better next time, but things are still in place. That, and that is one of the reasons why we still have the state of emergency, in case we have to roll back. So things are in place, and if we have to roll back, I think we will do it smoother than we did the last time. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator Mary Isaac. Minister with Responsibility for Physical Planning, Honorable Herod Stanislas, has reiterated government's commitment to guarding the right of citizens to access all beaches on the island. The assurance comes amid public concern regarding the proposed Cabot St. Lucia development at Cap Estate. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved a lease of the Queen's Chain adjacent to the development site for 75 years. However, Honorable Stanislas says the approval does not bar St. Lucians from accessing the Kazabar Beach. The cabinet conclusion clearly states that Cabot development had a surplus on the parcels of land. It was already in existence. Those leases were issued to Cap Estate Limited in 1973 for 75 years. There is a 28 year grace period and um, time. Um, remaining on those leases and basically the cabinet conclusion is an extension of those leases to another 75 years. Secret Beach, Kazamba Beach, Donkey Beach, none of those beaches will list to Cabot development. So in, a, in essence the beaches remain public. In fact all the beaches on the island remain public 
so that citizens have unlimited access to the beaches. There should not be any impediments of our citizens for the use of our beaches for recreational purposes. The physical planning minister says the government is aware and sensitive to the concerns surrounding the continued operation of Marjorie's Restaurant, which has been a staple at the Kazaba Beach for more than 20 years. Marjorie Lambert, in 2001, was issued a lease for five years for the block and parcel that her establishment is situated. Ms. Lambert currently holds a one-year lease. We are not going to infringe on the rights of Ms. Marjorie or prevent Ms. Marjorie from um, earning a living, which she has been doing so for about 20 years or more in this particular area. There will be discussions with Ms. Marjorie and the developers and also with the parliamentary representative, Honorable Motut, and the Department of Physical Planning on the way forward. But we are going to do everything within our powers to work with the developer, with Ms. Marjorie, and all stakeholders who currently have establishments on the beach at Kazaba. But I want to reinstate again, the beach is public. There is going to be unrestricted access to the Kazaba Beach, to Donkey Beach, to Secret Beach by the citizens of St. Lucia. Leasing of the Queen's Chain, Minister Stanislaus says, has been practiced for decades. You have a lease of in 2000 there between the state and the business for the Queen's Chain. You have enfitiotic leases for 75 years, 99 years. You know, in 2005 we had leases. In 2004 we had leases of the Queen's Chain. 2006 we had leases of the Queen's Chain. I could go on to this other, this other um, section right there. This, those are the leases. We had leases in 2008, enfitiotic leases of the Queen's Chain. We had leases in 2011, 99 year infatuatic leases, two hotels, two developers. We had infatuatic leases issued in 2008 again, in 2009, you know, 2014. So this is not something new. This is not a new practice, it's not a new policy. This has been a, a policy, an initiative, a practice of governments since the 1970s of leasing of the Queen's Chain to developers, to persons who own property adjacent to the Queen's Chain. Again, all beaches are public. There is unrestricted access to the beaches, either by, by foot or vehicular access. There are certain properties where you do not have vehicle, vehicular right of way on the map sheet or the land registry. So persons usually access those beaches by foot. There are beaches where there is unrestricted vehicular access. If you come in by sea, you could access any beach on the island for recreational use. Cabot St. Lucia has submitted a master plan to the Department of Physical Planning. Honorable Stanislaus says the department is processing the proposals in phases. Upon final approval, the minister stressed there will be no restricted access to the Kazabar Beach. Health officials are ramping up efforts to protect the population from dengue fever. The Ministry of Health has noted an increase in the cases of the vector-borne disease. With the rapid onset of the rainy season, the Ministry of Health and Wellness continues to encourage individuals to maintain health and safety measures to prevent the local transmission of dengue fever. Dengue fever is one of the most common vector-borne viral diseases affecting humans and is transmitted through the bite of the female Aedes aegypti and, through a lesser extent, the Aedes albopictus. Four serotypes of dengue exist, however, persons receive lifelong immunity against a serotype once infected with it. Only serotypes 2 and 3 have been recorded to date in St. Lucia, with the majority of the cases being children. Dr. Michelle Fassois is the national epidemiologist in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And um, normally when you get one type of dengue, um, you are predisposed to a more severe form. So that one type, you get lifelong immunity to it, but not to the other three. So for example, if I get dengue um, serotype one, 
I am immune to it for the rest of my life. However, if I do happen to get a type 2 or type 3 or type 4, with each progressive infection, I am more at risk of developing a more severe form of the illness. And this is why with the circulation of two serotypes in St. Lucia, as well as um, the 1, 2, and 3 in our nearby countries, we are very vigilant and very concerned about this. Chief Environmental Health Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Parker Ragnanen, also highlighted the intervention measures being undertaken by the Environmental Health Division, including lavasiding and fogging. Fogging is one of the treatment measures that are implemented to kill the adult mosquito. But if that adult has laid eggs already, the eggs will not die. The larva will not die. The pupa that is in the water drum will not die. And so you might pass around and fog the area, kill the, the adult mosquito, but in two days' time, you have new, new kids on the block. New adult mosquitoes are formed. Householders and property owners are encouraged to inspect their household at least twice a week in an effort to contain the Aedes aegypti mosquito population. Persons are also advised to avoid the indiscriminate dumping of garbage, which also serves as breeding ground for the mosquito. Ragnan explained the importance of the community working together to prevent the local transmission of dengue fever. Very often, what we find is one household is doing all that it can yeah. in taking the preventative measures. But two houses away from you, nobody cares. And mosquitoes have a reasonably long flight range. They can travel up to a mile depending on the wind direction and wind speed. So that means uh, if you are to look at a safe zone, you need to look at a one mile perimeter from where you live. Because it means that uh, if somebody has dengue fever and they're living half a mile from where I live, it is possible that a mosquito can bite that person, get infected and when that mosquito get infected we say technically the mosquito becomes infective and when you have an infective mosquito it can fly from half a mile to another person that distance and bite that person and that person can get the dengue fever as a result. The Ministry of Health and Wellness urges persons who may be experiencing signs and symptoms of dengue fever to seek care at the nearest wellness center. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novello Creole. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novello Creole. Monsieur Ta Anissia. Mr. Madam, Department of Kenya West Coast Ability, with formation and government secrecy, the CGIS, the Television National Payer, NTN, Capacito Nouvel, and Creole, with the Primus Hutchinson. Depuis le 14 août, cette ci j'ai trouvé l'humour yon à Kawibla pour adresser la maladie de Corona à Péla. Alors, une analysation pour comparer cas de maladie de Corona par 10 000 de population à Kawibla, cette ci trouvé 1.40 à parmi tout l'autre pays. Cette ci j'ai enregistré 100% de raison à ces 27 cas de COVID-19. Ministre des Affaires Santé, sénateur Honorable Mary Isaac, déclaré que Grand accomplissement ça là, c'est parce que citoyen pays a coopéré à d'un yon haut degré. Ministre Isaac a ajouté que ça pas voulait dire que nous sans des sorts maladie corona parce que juste toujours la pour connion la vaccine pour maladie et aussi bah un pays a ouvert pour les citoyens l'Angleterre l'Amérique et les autres pays entre eux. Madame Isaac dit que c'est faux cette ci continuer prendre bonne précaution 
pour faire possible pour pays à résister à l'égoué ça là eh, mais pour rester à l'égoué ça là est plus important pour ces bailles pour contrôler maladie corona cette ci c'est notre Isaac qui marque aussi pendant pays à ouvert pour voyage international et ça aussi qu'a embrassé pays qui y a considéré très haut de maladie ça là mais l'année monde qui a entré en pays illégalement sorti à ces pays qui voisinage cette ci ça y on ça c'est yo ka fait ça sans yo trouver testé et ça ka placer cette ici à la yo wis pour abattre maladie ça là madame Isaac dit qui ça qui plus haut menace pour cette ici c'est ça c'est un plus haut menace pour cette ici parce que c'est monde ça là qui vivre en parmi population sénateur Isaac dit qui ça qui ka plus chagriné et concerné gouvernement c'est un pile qui a continuer chain gwan festin et quand l'eau en yo ka combler toujours sans pièce protection et tout ce monde ça là qui a placé le pays à un haut risque de maladie de corona. Mais nous avons dit que ces gens qui n'ont pas porté le masque à Fidjaïo, et que l'année l'autre monde qui a soutenu, particulièrement c'est ça qui a été trouvé illégalement. Madame Maïsa a vêté et a aussi fait appel pour l'année en bout pour vieillir l'habitude de cela, et qui a demandé au public pour rapporter pour les autorités, personne qui a pu suivre un pays illégalement. Plusieurs mille Sétlésiens qui ont continué pour recevoir des bénéfices pour, pour soulager ces quantités en population qui perdent du travail en résultat des maladies de corona. J'ai eu des communications à l'institution NIC, McNaughton McLean, causé et puis moins concerné le développement de Selon McLean, NIC savent des grandes situations, ces quantités de monde qui ont brisé des grands soulagements pour faire, pour payer des dettes, pour occuper la famille a pas mis plus de l'autre responsabilité. Parce que nous savons que web, nous savons que pas ni pièces de l'argent, ni des billes pour payer, ni um, pour faire si vous avez un petit peu de famille. Et avec nous, j'ai commencé à payer depuis le mois d'avril, nous avons payé avril, avril, um, mai, avril, mai avec juin, avec aussi, nous avons tenu pour um, ajouter le programme ça là, pour continuer à jouer. Um, à ou avec uh, septembre. So, C'est six mois le um, programme ça qui a couvert. Bon, pour le présentement, nous avons payé um, 39,7 millions de dollars. Ça, c'est un chat et l'argent, nous avons payé. Avec um, uh, poche, combien de monde qui a um, joué une assistance ça là, nous avons un um, programme ça a couvert. Um, 48 365 paiements. Je vais dire en anglais 48,365 paiements en bas programme ça là. Avec nous qui avons gardé depuis um, avril jusqu'au um, mois de juillet. Avec nous pour finir le mois de juillet. Marklin dit aussi l'année 280 yon moun qui peut trouver le paiement parce que la peine yon de ti a fait qui pour qu'on doit à ce information qui est ouvré à tout. Avec um, délai, c'est mon qui 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 a travaillé pour commettre information en bas. Avec toutes ces bas, ça n'a pas de problème. C'est pour ça que c'est mon ça qui continue. Nous apprenons, nous comprenons ce qui est là. Avec nous qui travaillons, nous avons un petit monde en place pour continuer à travailler, pour faire si c'est mon ça qui a joué un paiement. En total de 4840 réclamations pas trouvées approuvées. 291 sont trouvés et éclamés en bas de l'examination toujours, avec un total de 43 000 individus qui ont trouvé le paiement, avec un total entièrement pour les pour le présents qui ont trouvé le paiement, c'est en haut de 39 millions de dollars. Le département de l'environnement santé publique a et le conseil public de cette ci pour prendre bonne précaution contre la fièvre dengue. La fièvre dengue qui est venue par les mains qui a pondé en de l'eau nette qui pose, ça veut dire si on a de l'eau qui n'est pas couvert, un porte qui est exposé, et puis de l'eau avec l'autre façon qui ne peut pas servir pour tuer de l'eau au lieu d'un établissement. Le chef officier du département de Salah, Pakaragnanan, a expliqué que les mains qui ont été apportés dans l'Aedes aegypti depuis le mois d'eau et qui ont été affectés. Ce qui a fait, si on a un malade avec dengue fièvre, et ou en maigouin, maigouin ça, nous avons parlé de la et des Égyptes maigouins, mort de moun ça là. Maigouin ça, même qui a venu infecter avec maladie. 
et que depuis venir avec tech maladie là il mort dans l'autre monde qui pas malade là qui ca passer malade là ben c'est monde ça là so il est important pour nous comprendre à votre antimiette à votre migraine ça là c'est un migraine qui ca rester comme j'ai dit à oléon kainou il y a un glow net so c'est nous une drum qui glow um vague nous ca mettre um vase nous ca mettre fleur c'est nous um Zordi, Olion Kaila, tout ce qui est fait avec Glo, et que Mike Wessar a pondu en dedans. Et c'est là qu'il a fait pitié. Donc so, nous avons pour point tout démarche pour tirer ces places-là, um, pour nous rabattre Kaino et ces places-là, côté Mike Wessar a pondu et fait pitié. Et ça, c'est côté nous. Tu vois, pour nous faire la mise, madame, je vous remercie pour votre temps. Je vous remercie pour votre invitation. Pour que je puisse vous encore vous dire, quand vous la vie, vous avez posé toutes les nouvelles. À quoi on a pris ça? Mon café est présenté en ici. Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of MTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Anissia Antoine.